This is part 115 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to implement forgot password functionality in ASP.NET Core. Our first natural step is to include this forgot password link on our login view. And here is the HTML required for that. So when we click on this forgot password anchor element, we want to take the user to forgot password action. So on our login view, just below the login button, let's include the required HTML for that. Save our changes and take a look at the browser. There we go. Here is the forgot password link. When we click that, we get a 404 error. And that's natural because we don't have this forgot password action within our account controller. We'll include that in just a bit. But before that, let's take a look at the forgot password view. The only field that we need on this view is email because to the user registered email address we'll be sending the password reset link. So in the view model class that is in this forgot password view model class we have just one property which is email to hold the user email address. So to our project let's add this view model class and we do that in the view models folder. Let's name our class forgot password view model. We just need one property in this view model class and that is email. And we also need to bring in the required namespace for these two attributes and that is system.componentModel.data annotations. Next, we need to add the view itself and here's the code required for that. The model for this view is this forgot password view model class and we want our view to look like this. So we have a form with a validation summary tag helper and then a label input and a span element for the email property. So we get this email input field and then the submit button. Here's the HTML for the submit button. So let's add this view to our project. We add it to the account subfolder in the views folder because the name of our controller is account controller. We want to add a razor view and the name is forgot password. This is the same view HTML we have just seen on the slide. We are still missing forgot password action within the account controller and as a result we have this 404 error. So within our account controller let's include forgot password action. This is straightforward code. The name of the action is forgot password and it returns this forgot password view. So let's save all our changes and take a look at the browser. Notice when I click the forgot password link, we see our forgot password view. If I try to submit this form without an email address, we get the required validation error. If I enter an invalid email address, we see that validation error too. On the other hand, if I provide a valid email address, and submit the form. We have a 404 error. That's because at the moment within our account controller we do not have forgot password action that can handle a post request. Before we add a post variation of this forgot password action, let's take a look at what should this action actually do. First, we want to generate the password reset token. For that, we use generate password reset token async method of the user manager service passing it the user object for whom we want to generate the password reset token. Once we have the token generated, we want to build the password reset link itself. For that, we use URL.actionHelper passing it the name of the action that will actually reset the password and that is reset password. We don't have this action yet. We'll implement it in our next video and then we specify the name of the controller which is account controller and then in the URL we want to pass the user email address and the password reset token itself as query string parameters and you already know the use of this last parameter request dot scheme it generates the request scheme that is HTTP or HTTPS and it is required to generate the full absolute URL otherwise a relative URL will be generated once we have the password reset link generated, we log it to a log file and then send the user to forgot password confirmation view. We don't have this view yet. We'll implement it in just a bit. And here is the complete code of the HTTP post variation of forgot password action. 
Before we inspect this code, let's add this forgot password confirmation view to our project. We add it to this account subfolder. This view is pretty straightforward. All it does is display this generic confirmation message to the user. This forgot password action receives forgot password view model as a parameter. And if you remember, forgot password view model has got email property. So we use the user email address to find that user within our system. If we have found the user, that is this user variable is not null and very important if the user email address is confirmed. So if these two conditions are true, then we generate the password reset token, build the password reset link, and then log that to a log file and send the user to forgot password confirmation view, which displays this generic confirmation message. If any one of these two conditions is false, we still send the user to that same forgot password confirmation view, which displays this generic message. That's because we do not want to reveal that we cannot find the user with the provided email address or that the user email address is not confirmed to avoid account enumeration and brute force attacks. And we do all this only if the model state is valid. If it is not valid, we re-render the forgot password view so it can display the model validation errors like email is required or email is invalid. Within the account controller, after this HTTP get forgot password action, let's include the HTTP post variation. Let's save our changes and take a look at the browser. On this forgot password page, let's provide a valid email address pregeem at pregeemtech.com. If we now take a look at ASP.NET users table, notice this email address pregeem at pregeemtech.com is confirmed. So if we click the submit button, the password reset link should be generated. There we go. In the log file, we have the password reset link generated and it is pointing to the reset password action in the account controller. In the URL, we have the user email address and the password reset token itself as query string parameters. So let's copy this URL, paste it in the browser, and then press the Enter key. We have a 404 error because we don't have this reset password action in the account controller. We'll implement it in our next video. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.